Hello, I'm Ken McLean, uh, talking a little bit about macrobiotics and the different principles. We've talked a little bit about yin and yang, the, the principle of opposites <coughs> and the cycles of life. Today I wanted to talk about what's commonly called the five elements or the five transformations. Sometimes, what I call it sometimes is the five energies. From oneness we talk about two forces arising, we talk about the expanding force, the outgoing force, and the incoming force, which is commonly called yin and yang. And we've talked about the relationship and creating balance between them on various levels, for example, food or activity. <coughs> Within the, the secondary expression that could come out of that is sometimes called the five energies. In other words, if yin and yang, if oneness was a circle, you know, symbolised by a circle, then we have a downward movement which we'd call the yang part, point, point of the cycle coming in, and the rising part. So there we have yin and yang. But if we put five points on that circle, we'd have uh, what we call the five energies. And light being cyclic, like the, the year has its cycle, its seasons, and then there's another year, and another one. We call it the principle of the spiral. <clears throat> well, let's just take the five energies first. And uh, so, What's called in Oriental medicine fire is the upward point of that cycle when things are on a high. The second part is when that, after a high, after like uh, the heat of summer, after the, or if you went to fireworks, you see the big expanding energy, we call that the fire point, when things expand, and then after that they start to fall and settle. That part of the cycle is called soil or earth. As things start to settle, they begin to gather in again, if you're looking again at the example of the circle. The upper part being fire, the falling part being soil, and then as it starts to come to the bottom of the cycle, we call that metal energy. Because it represents things gathering. In nature, it represents things that gather and become hard, like rocks and minerals. And then there's a point in the cycle where it starts to slow down before its return journey. And that is commonly called water energy represented a pool of water that's where energy starts to slow down and stop. Like in a, in a Arctic environment, uh, not Arctic environment, but a temperate environment, the deep winter when the snow becomes like ice before it melts, when everything becomes still in winter. When every, and then the, the shift where the energy changes, it rises, starts to go up again, that's called wood or tree energy, the rising energy, trees are rising up before they branch out. Branching out part would be the fire part again. So there's these cycles in nature. In Oriental medicine, there's a whole category of, of um, expressions, the five expressions. For example, the fire energy, we talk about it ruling the heart and ruling the, the emotion of joy. And, and, and the understanding that there's a type of food that grows at that time, like leafy greens. Corn is the grain at that time. I don't want to go deeply into all the five today, but just wanted to give a, an introductory talk in how these cycles of energy occur and how there's these five expressions. And that there are the five sets of organs and the five emotions and the five tastes. And that eventually, after we've first understood what are yin foods, what are yang foods, what are balancing foods, we begin to then create a greater distinction in the types of vegetables to nourish the various organs, the types of grains, the emotions that come out of that. Hence we can understand what we're feeling at any given time and what's been created by that. I'd like to talk further on this subject at another time. Thank you.